Now, now this is a Super Bowl game, and everything's a lot different when it comes to Super Bowl. Ah! A lot of things tighten up. You know what I'm talking about? And he's down. I can't see. Okay. You can't even get a blade of grass up there. Some people. This is your dream to go to the Super Bowl. The biggest football game in the history of Western civilization. The Super Bowl. Maybe you've heard of it. The game has had its share of great moments and performances. But we ask, what's the difference between the two? A performance is something that happens from quarter one to quarter last. We only have 60 minutes to get it done. If you say top 10 Super Bowl moments, and David Tyree's catch makes it. How in the world did he do that? Top 10 Super Bowl performances, David Tyree's not in this program. No. What? Great Super Bowl performances you never forget when it happened or where it happened. He's gone. Those things are just cemented. Defining performance is easy. Cracking our list of the greatest Super Bowl performances is not. Who's deserving? Our rankings might surprise you. Wow. That's the beauty of it. There's no way of predicting it. We shocked the world, but we didn't shock ourselves. The number 10 Super Bowl performance of all time. Jerry Rice in Super Bowl 23. Jerry Rice deserves everything that he gets at any ranking in the top 10 of anything, certainly when it comes to Super Bowls. Our countdown kicks off with a star born to shine on the NFL's biggest stage. Throws for Rice! He's got it at the 10! Montana throwing on for Rice, and he makes the catch! Rice just went up and took it away. In his first Super Bowl appearance, our number 10 performer caught 11 passes for a Super Bowl record 215 yards. Touchdown, 49! If Jerry Rice doesn't do half the things he did in that Super Bowl, Guess who's going to be an MVP? then the 49ers are not set up at the end of that game for one of the most dramatic comebacks in the history of postseason football. With 3-10 remaining, the 49ers will have to go from their eight-yard line. Super Bowl 23, the final drive. I'll never forget it. I just knew inside that we would win that football game. In that last drive, he had three catches. Jerry Rice with another catch. Sam Weish is practically calling the plays. Get some movement if you're worried about the scrambling and run thing. He knows where the ball's going. You know, it's, it's to Rice now. Everybody knows that they're looking for Jerry Rice, and yet he got open and caught the ball. Throws over the middle. A fine catch by Rice. Rice into the 20. He's down to the 19. Another brilliant catch by Jerry Rice. How can they leave Jerry on top of it like that? I don't know. I don't know. We had a coverage that was really designed to take care of Jerry, and on that particular play, we had him covered so well that our guys ran into each other. That was a 27-yard gainer on second down and 20. Let's work on Jerry here. Let's make somebody else beat us, and then he still beats you? I mean, that's not fair. Jerry Rice, I've heard there's a new TV series coming out based on your Super Bowl performance. Miami Rice. So why isn't the greatest wide receiver of all time higher on our list? Back to throw Montana. Steps up, throws. If Jerry Rice scores on the pass, then he becomes the great hero, completing a great, great day and a great, great season. But he didn't. John Taylor got the touchdown. This is a tough moment in a way because was this the final game on the sideline for a great coach, Bill Walsh? After the game, Bill Walsh announced that he was leaving as the 49ers head coach. And that almost sunk the game itself. Super Bowl 23 was one of the best performances ever for Jerry Rice, but he was just getting warmed up. The performance he had in the Super Bowl the next year against Denver was no less remarkable. Montana launches it from the end zone! Jerry Rice! Oh, what a catch by Rice! He comes back five years later and he has 148 yards and three touchdowns in the Super Bowl. Jerry Rice continues to set records in the Super Bowl. It's one of the problems with the players as great as Jerry. 
as good as they were and as great as they were, they didn't have every single moment. Quarterbacks are always the center of attention at the Super Bowl, so they couldn't all make our list of top 10 Super Bowl performances. Kurt Warner shredded the steel curtain with 377 yards passing in Super Bowl 43. Oh, baby! The Cardinals are alive! Come on, Terry! The Steelers' Terry Bradshaw completed four touchdown passes in Super Bowl 13. A perfect strike by Terry Bradshaw! Flash 59, laser! In Super Bowl 24, Joe Montana threw five. Just complete control of the offense. It's a clinic. But while these quarterbacks would be on anyone's list of top 10 Super Bowl careers, it's hard to single out one of their games like our next performer. The number nine Super Bowl performance of all time, Joe Namath in Super Bowl three. I guarantee it. In a kingdom on the coast, there was a little prince who made a mighty boast. I'll throw that bean, he said, and straight I'll make it go. There's no doubt about it, said the boy named Broadway Joe. I hope you don't have Joe Namath on there. Namath didn't do anything that great. Damn, we should have had three points that time, at least. I mean, he did not have a great statistical, quote-unquote, game. Hell, I'm sorry. We should have some points up on the board that time. When you think of Super Bowl three, you think of Joe Namath. But he only had two of those passes, longer than 20 yards. And it's complete to George Sauer. He did not throw a pass in the fourth quarter. They checked it off. In fact, it was a very boring game. Well, you can't please any everybody. Unlike most Super Bowl quarterbacks, Joe Namath's performance in the big game began off the field. Namath gets to nine because Namath said what he said. We're going to win the game, I guarantee it. We're going to win the game, I guarantee it. We're going to win the game, I guarantee it. I mean, he said we're going to win. Is a player ever going to say he's going to lose? He has said that the Jets are going to win. He doesn't even predict it. He says, I guarantee a Jet victory. I love when we show old games on this network, and it's jarring to see the lack of graphics on the screen. We'll be throwing up uh, these statistics uh, during the game. The reason why I bring this up is I watched the game, and Namath managed the game more than anything else, to use the phrase, manage the game. This was a guy who was all about throwing the football. I feel I can throw as well or better than anybody. But yet, you know, on a day when he's controlling everything, he's calling all the plays, he took his ego out of the equation entirely and played the game the way he felt the Jets had to play it to win. He's in there, the game is over. The New York Jets are the world champions. They have upset the Baltimore Colts and beat them handily here today. The Jets' upset of the Colts made our number nine performer an NFL legend. One of sports and a hit on Madison Avenue. Now, I don't wear pantyhose, but a beauty mask can make my legs look good. Imagine what they'll do for yours. <laughs> when you look at the history of sports, uh, that moment ranks either 1A, 1B, or 1C as the most overrated event that you can possibly think of. Joe Namath put on a heck of a performance before Super Bowl III, but in reality, Matt Snell was probably the MVP of that game. Matt Snell has been the outstanding runner so far. AFL wins their first, the guarantee, the brashness of a New York quarterback. That's why Namath gets in your top 10. Joe Namath uh, being on this list, I know a lot of people would have a problem with it. Basically, he just went there, didn't really blow it, and that's like, one of the greatest Super Bowl performances ever. I totally disagree with that argument. If you just focus on 17 for 28 for 206 yards and no touchdowns, you lose all perspective of what he meant in the grand scheme of things. The number eight Super Bowl performance of all time. Phil Simms in Super Bowl 21. The great Phil Simms. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Disney World. You have to preface it with the great Phil Simms. Remember how accurate he was that day. Simms is seven of seven. He was just on target. The most underrated quarterback in the NFL. 
22 or 25, that's almost pitching a perfect game. Yankee bad boy Don Larson made history in the first perfect game in World Series history. When you got a guy who's nearly perfect in the Super Bowl, you can't rank that too high. I'm going to go to Disneyland. All these people thinking, what the f*** is he doing? <laughs> While Phil Simms' Super Bowl performance was a total success, his welcome to New York was a total disaster. New York Giants first round selection. Quarterback Phil Simms, Moorhead State. For years, Simms struggled to satisfy the Big Apple fans. I've never seen anybody have to play in tougher conditions than Phil Simms in New York. And the big tuna. Every once in a while, you know, he'll make some judgments that I've kind of wondered why he made them. You know, he's always screaming at practice, do it better, that stinks, you stink. Hey, Phil, I'll run the game. What was good for everybody else was also good for Sims in the terms of the verbal communication. I tell you, I wish that Sims had just come out there and get hot. Our number eight performer set a Super Bowl record by completing 88% of his passes for 268 yards and three scores. You know, the second half performance of the entire giant football team I thought was outstanding. Tim drops, he looks, he fires, it's a touchdown! Certainly feel through the ball extremely well. That's about as perfect as a quarterback can get in the big game. Now they go to the cocky, and he's inside the 10, and the Giants are ready to put the knockout punch on. You know, I'd like to tell you, make a lie up and tell you this great thing. Yeah, I was in the zone. I could feel it. You know what it was? We called plays that, man, we knew we were on their headsets. That, that drive is a Super Bowl drive. That ought to dispel uh, any myth about Phil Sim. The 86 game gets a little lost for Phil because the Giants had a great defense. And they get it. He gets overlooked a little bit from his greatness. Phil Sim for some shot here. The Giants took over this game. Phil Sims at the time, that came out of nowhere. So that certainly deserves to be where it's, it's at right now. To be number eight, uh, it's not giving enough credit where, where the credit is due. The Super Bowl has seen plenty of unknowns make names for themselves. Larry Brown's two interceptions in Super Bowl 30 earned him the MVP. Larry Brown with a big interception. And a prime time endorsement. You get one more, you can run for mayor. <laughs> A single tackle in Super Bowl 34 made Rams linebacker Mike Jones a household name. He dives for the end zone. Didn't make it. He came up one yard short. Thank you, buddy. In Super Bowl 42, the Giants' David Tyree stole the show. Who's David Tyree? Number 85 made the play that propelled New York to a monumental upset. And it is hot. But of all our Cinderella stories, no one fits the glass slipper better than a Redskins rookie. The number seven Super Bowl performance of all time, Timmy Smith in Super Bowl 22. Good afternoon from Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego, California. The road to Super Bowl 22 stops right here. For Timmy Smith, the road to a top 10 Super Bowl performance was a surprising and unlikely journey. The first thing that comes to mind is they didn't tell him he was going to start. Smith starting the game, the rookie. I didn't have any clue that Timmy Smith was going to start until he showed up in the huddle the first series. Reason? Because they were afraid he'd throw up, that he wouldn't be able to handle it. And when it came time for the offense to go on the field, they said, Smith, get in there. So he didn't have time to get nervous. He'll hand off to Smith, the deep back, good hole, midfield, horse race to the 40, far side 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Washington Redskins, Timmy Smith. They throw him into the game, and, and, and there's no time for him to think about it or anything else. He just goes in there and runs. Snap, here comes Timmy Smith, up the middle, touchdown. He just kept going and going and going. This is history in the making. Holy cow, say the Broncos. Who is that kid? You know, he goes from uh, a running back that, that not many of us knew anything about to a guy that you know, rushes for 200-something yards. He's got to go over 200 yards. Will be the single-game rushing leader in Super Bowl history. That's got to do it. There's a whole lot of people around the country have never heard of this young man until tonight. Only people who study NFL trivia.
probably remember Timmy Smith having over 200 yards rushing in that game. You talk about flukes. This is one of the greatest flukes ever in sports. Tim Smith is a simple one for me. It's called the Hawks. And just watch what the Redskins offensive line does to the Bronco defense. They destroyed Denver up front. Domination at the line of scrimmage. They ran that counter tray over and over and over. The back takes a counter step. The two off linemen come around and through the hole. And they have just been pouring it to Denver on that play all day. Doesn't get touched until he's 10 yards downfield. Relatively easy when the first guy you take on is either a linebacker or a defensive back. He's waving at guys like Tony Lilly. Timmy Smith just outran Tony Lilly. Tony Lilly, hey baby, you've had a long day already. It's only just short of halftime. He just ran through some gigantic holes, ran to daylight. You could have driven trucks through them. The blocking he's getting up front is absolutely incredible. Pickup trucks. You could have driven a truck full of Timmy Smiths in it. Certainly the Hogs gave him a great deal of holes, but he did finish those runs. He ran people over, he got yards, you know, after contact, he did a lot of other things that day. Fantasy land for Timmy Smith. Well, I think you have to celebrate Timmy Smith, but I don't think anything should be taken away from him. The number six Super Bowl performance of all time. John Riggins in Super Bowl 17. Drink up that diesel. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, oh, I'm. When the Redskins went to their Super Bowls, it really was about Riggins. Big run, John Riggins. John Riggins ran roughshod over the Miami Dolphins in Super Bowl 17, rushing for a then record 166 yards. He ran over people. Oh, John Riggins, the diesel get warm. He ran around people. From the left side, big yard first down. John started feeling. There's certain people that have the ability to be on a stage. This is for John Riggins, who does a bow at the 43 yard line. John would have the ability to raise it up a level. At least for tonight, Ron's the president, but I'm the king. <laughs> the John Riggins Super Bowl was overrated. This is, was a performance against one of the weaker Super Bowl teams that you're going to find. A killer B! It had the magic name, but they had a lot of holes and deficits. And all Riggins needs is a little crack. You can't tackle Riggins high. That's way too high. I think he still had a great day. He couldn't tackle him. I mean, arm tackles that might have brought him down, those arms have been ripped apart for three quarters. He powers inside the 30, and he moved about six people with him. Guys just don't have that type of strength anymore. For Redskin fans, 70 chip in the Super Bowl against the Dolphins is the equivalent in a sports sense of where were you when JFK got shot. See what Joe Gibbs' choice will be on fourth and about a yard for the first down. We know what's coming. You know what's coming. There's no doubt it's going to be Riggins. Let's go. Goal line, goal line. I left tight wing, 70 chip on white. Ready? Yellow 41! Yellow 41! Hunt him, hunt him. There's the snap hand to Riggins. Good hold. He's got the first down to the 40. He's gone. He's gone. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. I wish I had kept the royalties to it because Steve Sables just milked it to death. Well, the John Riggins touchdown run had to be one of the great runs in Super Bowl history. The run was the culmination of, you know, 100 shots at the tree, and yeah, the tree fell that on that run. His performance that day was phenomenal. He's gone! He's gone! Touchdown, Washington Redskins! I got $32 for that call. It's worth a million. And now the number five Super Bowl performance of all time, Lynn Swan in Super Bowl X. First, you have to get the right name to be graceful, okay? You, you have to be born a swan, okay? It was like watching Barishnikov in a gathering of slam dancers. Oh, he had to go up for that football! Those catches, to me, are, are the purest form of physical artistry in the history of the Super Bowl. Swan on a beautiful maneuver. No. He made two great catches. That's terrific. Good, good job. Lynn Swan in Super Bowl X made a couple of amazing catches. Highlights that will live forever. But he only made four receptions. I have three Jerry Rice games I would pick ahead of it. 
Well, it's easy to say you only touched it four times. I believe that was for 700 yards. But I'll tell you, the young man from SC is fleet. Swan was just brilliant in the Super Bowl. Every catch was a huge catch. Uh, this is the uh, game ball okay. for, uh, the, um, for the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's all mine. Swan deserved the game ball for just showing up. Two weeks earlier, he was carted off the field in the AFC Championship game. Came across the middle for a pass. I caught the pass. Uh, Atkinson, instead of just a tackle, collared me around the head, which was legal at that time. It's just a good, solid, strong, strong hit. And, you know, from that moment on, I was out of the ball game. And later on, in an ambulance going to the hospital. Come on. His life was never in danger. The guy's soft. Soft. In Super Bowl X, our number five performer suited up and captivated America against America's team. I took the challenge. The most important catch I had in Super Bowl X was the very first pass thrown to me. I had to make that catch. And back goes Bradshaw to fire to the near side. Ward was then and they rule a good catch at the Dallas 16 yard line. The one catch where where our cameraman is right parallel the sidelines. And you see Lynn out of bounds. Somehow he keeps his feet in, twisting his body back in bounds to make the catch. Oh, he gets a both out. A beautiful reception. The ball well thrown. Okay. And action. Very often, wide receivers are compared to dancers because of the grace of their moves on the football field. Being a roommate of a guy named Lynn, who takes ballet, a little nervous at first, yeah. The Headcracker Suite? Tchaikovsky? Tchaikovsky? Who does he play for? But it really produced a, uh, a great leaper and uh, just a uh, great ball player. As Swan made a nifty move, turning to take the ball. Lynn Swan's pirouettes helped the Steel City win four Super Bowls, and he will always be remembered for his signature play, the levitating leap. So are you gonna show the catch? You gotta show the catch. He was up in the air and made a circus catch. It's not an NFL Films production unless you show the catch. That was pure ballet right there. If you see his eyes, his eyes never come off the ball. I, mean, I, I still love seeing him when uh, NFL Films shows it. He looked like a flying circus. It's too high. Everybody is going by one catch, and it doesn't deserve all that. Certainly not in the top 10, and certainly not in the top five. Terry knows he can depend on me. He knows I won't come back in the huddle and say, Terry, I'm open, I'm open, throw the ball. He knows if I come in, it's because I've set up the defense and back. If I tell him, he'll run it. He looks downfield, has time, cranks it, going long for Swan. He's done it. Swan, touchdown, Pittsburgh. That game helped make him a Hall of Famer. I mean, we see those highlights over and over and over again. We're going to do backflips because they made nice highlights. In Super Bowl X, against a really good Cowboys team, he made the plays that made the difference. Super Bowl X, that Sunday, that was my day. Forever. At number four, Super Bowl performance of all time. Adam Vinatieri in Super Bowls 36 and 38. Number four. You got to put Adam Vinatieri up there simply because without those kicks, the Patriots aren't the Patriots. And now, Adam Vinatieri can be the hero for the Patriots. You mean to tell me that you invited me all the way back to Philadelphia to ask me about a lousy kicker? Super Bowl performances by kickers are usually remembered more for being harrowing than heroic. And Martin Gramatica looking like Garrell Yefremian from 30 years ago. Garrell Yefremian lost his head and tried to throw a pass. And while Jim O'Brien booted Baltimore to its first Super Bowl championship. The kick is up and is long enough in. It's The writers voted the Cowboys Chuck Howley the MVP. Kickers are people, too. I am sick and tired of kickers getting kicked around. We agree. Adam Vinatieri makes our list because he made a once-in-a-lifetime Super Bowl game-winning kick. It's gone! Twice. The Patriots are Super Bowl champions! When you were watching the games was when he came in to kick, you never thought about him missing. Ball is on the far hash mark. I mean, you never thought about how far it was. This one will be 47 yards. You never thought about what the conditions were. Adam Vinatieri kicks it through the snow. 
he comes on the field to make a kick in a big spot, and you just say, well, he's going to make it. He kicked the Patriots past the Rams in Super Bowl 36. Snap ball down, kick up, kick is on the way, and it is good! And the Patriots are Super Bowl champions! Hey, beat me, what can I say? And he drilled the game winner in Super Bowl 38 against the Panthers. Snap, ball down, kick up, kick is on the way. When he had to have it, he got it. Adam Vinatieri with the money on the table, bangs it through. Adam Vinatieri, best Super Bowl performance ever? No, sorry. Look at his 2003 Super Bowl. First quarter, 31-yard kick, wide right. No good. A 31-yard field goal attempt is missed. Later in the game, 36-yard kick, blocked. Snap, place for kick, is blocked. And the Panthers have stopped the Patriots again. We don't need the late game heroics if you do your job in the first quarter. Come on, fellas, don't let them hang around. He had what he would probably grade a D kicking day that day. How important is a kicker? Scott Norwood. He can fire the shot heard round the world now. And they're never as important as people think they are until you need them. The Buffalo Bills had a tremendous opportunity to beat the Giants in a Super Bowl. Wide right cost Bobby Bowden three national championships. Wide right, no good. If he makes the play that results in you holding up the Lombardi Trophy. The best team in the National Football League. He has a place in football history, along with all the great players at every other position. All you got to do is look at Adam Vinatieri and figure out if he couldn't get it done, how many rings the Patriots would have. This is the moment you have all been waiting for. Enjoy. I say zero. I say zero rings. Some players wait an entire career for a shot at embracing the Lombardi Trophy. Reggie White switched from green and silver to green and gold before he could hoist his hollow prize. The Vince Lombardi Trophy is coming home. Michael Strahan took his final bow at Super Bowl 42. Back to throw, sets in the pocket, he's sacked by Michael Strahan. He culminated a 15-year career as a curtain call champion. We won the Super Bowl. Home sweet home, baby. Jerome Bettis picked up his trophy on the final stop of a distinguished career. I'm a champion, and I think the bus's last stop is here in Detroit. John Elway played 15 seasons before he was fitted with a pair of championship rings. My goodness! You want to tell me the 37-year-old man doesn't want to win this game? Man, oh man. That sacrifice. You know how good that nice that ring's going to look on your finger. But no one needed to win a Super Bowl more than this 49er star. The number three Super Bowl performance of all time. Steve Young in Super Bowl 29. You know, you wake up in the morning of the Super Bowl and you say to yourself that tonight, tonight, my life will be different. One way or another, my life is going to be different. Steve Young arrived at Super Bowl 29 carrying a heavy load, the weight of Joe Montana's shadow. Throughout his whole career as a franchise quarterback, nothing he did was ever good enough. He had won the passing title. What a play by Steve Young! He had won the MVP award, and yet every time he lost, people would say, well, Joe would have Joe would have won that game. Gets back up and is landed out of the 16-yard line. Then he lost the ball, and for the second time, Montana is still the best, and he always will be. Ratings were always great. The numbers were always great. Had no Super Bowl wins. When you're supplanting a quarterback that's got four Super Bowl wins on that team, that's a great deal of pressure. Once our number three performer made it to the ball, no one was going to cut in on his dance with destiny. And a play fake. Young goes deep middle. He's got Jerry Wright. Touchdown, 49ers. First touchdown of the game. Comes after only a minute and 24 seconds. That was Steve Young's coming out party. You could see that coming a mile away, man. That was a freight train coming a mile down the road, and it was nothing you can do to stop it. Young with a play fake. Drops back to throw. Deep middle. Waters are great. Over the shoulder. Catch. Sorry, San Diego, you know, sorry. But he, he was going to unleash all of that pent-up frustration. Young goes back to throw. Quick pass to the goal line. Floyd falls in. Touchdown, 49ers. Shut him down again. One more time. Right, one more time. That really was 
his moment in time where he was going to put his stamp on the game. Quick pass, left flat, Ricky Waters makes the catch again. Young has got four touchdown passes. We're in the first half. Steve Young on his way to a rating of about 300. His opponent wasn't the Chargers. What he was playing that day was the ghost of Joe Montana. Montana puts it on the hip, comes back, throws for the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers! Five touchdown passes. That's the record. He had to win the game, and because of the team he was playing against, he had to win it in historic fashion. Back to throw is Young. Throws it across the middle. Catch by Rice. Beat the the fifth touchdown pass of the game by Steve Young tying him with Joe Montana for the most in Super Bowl history. Joe was Joe. Steve would never be Joe, but Steve would do something Joe never did, and he threw six touchdowns. Young, quick pass, slanted, Jerry Rice, another touchdown! Steve Young is now number one all-time with six touchdown passes. To me, it was a, it was a mind-boggling performance. Yeah, Steve with his six touchdowns, a great performance, an almost perfect performance, really. I mean, he probably could have thrown more if they really wanted to. Someone take the monkey off my back, please! No, oh, it was Andrew Miller! It's gone forever! Somebody take the monkey off my back. I mean, I perfectly understand what he was saying there. That was his opportunity to finally stand on equal footing with Joe Montana. <laughs> I can't remember ever being around someone hugging the trophy with more feeling than you are right now, Steve. He's earned his own spot in the empire, so to speak. Everyone in this room made a commitment, and we're there, and no can ever, ever take it away from us, ever! Running backs can not only carry a team to victory, they can carry their team to a Super Bowl championship. Larry Zonka helped the Dolphins repeat with 145 yards and two touchdowns in Super Bowl VIII. Larry Zonka carries it in. So far, it's been all Miami. All Larry Zonka. That's right. In Super Bowl XXXII, Denver's Terrell Davis led John Elway and the Broncos to their first world title with 157 yards and three touchdowns. Third rushing touchdown. That's a Super Bowl record for TD. And in Super Bowl 28, Emmett Smith capped an MVP season by winning MVP of the Super Bowl, rushing for 132 yards. But none of these workhorses produced a signature run like the thoroughbred that made our list. The number two Super Bowl performance of all time, Marcus Allen in Super Bowl 18. How important is Marcus Allen to this team? How important is our treasury to this country? Cut back over the middle, three, two, one, touchdown Raiders! I was seeing something that I had really, quite frankly, had never seen before. You don't teach that kind of running. This is reaction. This is a great running back. Then I remember Ronald Reagan's post-game call. <laughs> To the locker room. I have already had a call from Moscow. They think that Marcus Allen is a new secret weapon, and they insist that we dismantle it. You, we could use someone like you. It just, it was, it was cringe-inducing. Our number two performer was the challenger to John Riggins' defending champion, Washington Redskins, who eyed a title repeat after a record-setting 1983 season. The Redskins were a great team. I mean, they were the defending world champions. The Washington Redskins have an NFL championship. They had set the record for points in a season. Touchdown, John Riggins! And their defense wasn't bad either. The Redskins were so confident. You could see it even when we went out to the field for warm-ups. They were so confident they were going to beat us. On game day, Allen came, Allen saw, and then he conquered, stunning the Redskins with a then record 191 yards rushing and two scores. Everything turned into slow motion. Give it Allen, second back. He's nice for guys to the goal line. Touchdown, Raiders! I mean, I was just in a, in, a, in a completely free, you know, environment and doing whatever I wanted to do. It made everything look so easy. Anybody that can cut back like that, dart, change holes, jump over people like he did. He's just running by him and around him and everything. He was a fantastic talent.
On the last play of the third quarter, the most famous broken run in Super Bowl history clinched our number two performance. The play was called 17 Bob Trail. Even now, whenever I see that highlight, I get tingles when I remember John Facenda saying, here comes Marcus Allen running with the night. On came Marcus Allen running with the night. Bucket giving to Allen, sending him wide left. He has to reverse his field, but he, and he gets away for a moment. I mean, it was like a thoroughbred at the Kentucky Derby. It was just unforgettable. He may have run a total of close to 100 yards on that play. You would think they would put his hands on his knees. He would have been sucking for air. He wasn't. He was like, didn't even phase him. Marcus Allen has just claimed full title of our world for 1983. Super Bowls are all about moments. When you've got all these Washington Redskins just laying on the ground as he's running through them. I have never seen anyone run against the Redskins like this. That is definitely one of the top two performances in the history of any Super Bowl. See, when I look back on it, I look at the whole thing. And I look at the way he controlled that game. He was the MVP of that game before he ever took that handoff. Then he becomes an all-time player when he gets to the end zone. Silver and black football. Is king of the hill. Just win, baby. And now the number one Super Bowl performance of all time. Doug Williams in Super Bowl 22. Number one. Doug Williams' performance in Super Bowl 22 is what dreams are made of. Play action fake. Williams going up top. Got Sanders on the fly. Midfield. He's gone. The 30, the 20, the 15, the 10. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. It's a performance that you could make a movie about and nobody believe it. Williams to pass, lobs it up. He's got Clark at the goal line. He's got it. This was a, just a backup guy. And then he comes in and he does that? That was remarkable. Even more remarkable is how much our number one Super Bowl performer had to overcome to put the Redskins in position to win. That game was a soap opera. It looked for a moment that once again, things were gonna go very badly for the Redskins. Can you believe that? In one play, the Broncos are up. Well, the Redskins are stunned. Trailing 10-0, Washington got its biggest scare from its own quarterback. Did you see him twist his leg when he went down? Doug Williams has got to have a sore leg. When Doug goes down, you're thinking, oh, it's over. He, he's not coming back. And we all thought, uh-oh, it's going to be Schrader. So here comes Schrader. There was no way that day that Jay Schrader was going to play. Washington's offense is back on the football field, and so is number 17, Doug Williams. He came back into the game, and boom. Well, Doug Williams and company light it up, and they're back in this game. It's hard to realize that Denver was on top 10 to nothing. What a turnaround. We are seeing a virtuoso performance. I was just absolutely amazed at the precision with which he ran that offense. He's got Sanders in the clear at the 10. Touchdown! Second quarter was delightful. A monster quarter for Washington. His second quarter was absolutely perfection at the quarterback position. That's a new Super Bowl record. Four touchdowns in one quarter. It's like calling a fireworks display. You know, they just kept scoring and scoring and scoring. I'm flabbergasted at what Washington's doing to Denver this quarter. It became a slaughter. 322 yards and a quarter. That's one of those no moss games. This is a fight, they might stop it. Second half was like covering a funeral. If you're a Denver fan, that ain't a pretty sight. Our number one performer finished with 340 yards passing to go along with his Super Bowl record four touchdown passes in one quarter. One of the greatest feats, not only in the history of Super Bowls, but in the history of sports. Doug Williams, he is having a dream day for a quarterback. Doug Williams, Super Bowl 23, clearly the greatest performance in the history of Super Bowl. Not even close. He was a black quarterback breaking down the racial barrier for winning the Super Bowl. The first black quarterback to start a Super Bowl, the first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl. Playing for all the people that had gone before him. 
the Marlon Briscoes, the James Harris, the Joe Gillians. He had to fulfill all those expectations, and he came up with one of the great Super Bowl performances. I think that's a big part of why he's number one. You can justify Doug Williams' place on this list any number of ways. I think you take the numbers, I think, think you take the circumstance, you take the fact the team was down at the time, I think it has no peer. And the statement he made by the way he played, I think is, it's one that's unique, and it's one that I think should be cherished. Our masterpiece is finally finished, so do we have a work of art or a work in progress? Great job! Picture perfect, not one mistake. Are you out of your mind? And while our countdown may be complete, the debate rages on. Timmy Smith is way too high. I disagree with that. Adam Vinatieri ends up number four. <laughs> you want to rank that ahead of Lynn Swan? How about the, the performance, you know, of Eli and, and that offense just this last year? Eli, to his critics, how you like me now? I think I might ra rank Elway's performance ahead of that. That is exactly right. He might be an honorable mention, but no.